Okay, everyone, uh, no one asked for questions 1, 2, 3, 8, 10, or 11, so I'm not going to be kind of explaining anything there. I'm just going to um, put the answers up and you can pause them as needs be. And I'll go through the rest of the questions that people asked for. Okay, it's a chemical change because a new substance has been formed. Uh, the two types of energy that were released were heat and light. And it can't be reversed because you formed a new substance by um, rearranging the ones you started with. So that's why it's irreversible. The two gases produced were carbon dioxide and also water vapour. So water is usually produced in combustion. It's just because of the heat, it's turned to a vapour. One quick note on this one is the uh, last part with the digital multimeter. The multimeter can be used to measure a load of different things. Um, here's what they look like. You can use it to measure resistance, current, voltage. So any of those would have been an acceptable answer, so I've added them in there too. So the trick with these is to remember that the atomic number refers to how many protons an atom has. The mass number refers to how many protons and neutrons it has altogether. And that you can figure out how many neutrons it has by taking the two away. And the last two bits, identify the location of the electron of the atom. They're orbiting the nucleus, they're in shells. And the only element there which has the same number of neutrons as it does protons is oxygen. In the, in the selection of atoms that they gave you there, that is. This is a very quick question on photosynthesis, and even though this is only a sample paper, I can't overstress how much you should make sure you're solid on photosynthesis and respiration. Um, if you haven't already, go back and study that pretty much now. <laughs> and if you get a chance, watch the video I made on photosynthesis as well. It might help. They're being a little sneaky in this one, in that it's a straightforward speed question, so speed is distance over time, but they're trying to confuse you by asking you to convert back and forth between metres and kilometres and seconds and minutes and hours. So the trick is just to remember how many is in each, so there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, and that there's 1,000 metres in a kilometre. To measure mass values, you're going to use a mass balance. You could also say an electronic balance, but not a lab balance. And definitely don't say weighing scales, that's no good. You can't go wrong with a mass balance here. Uh, one piece of equipment used to measure it, a measuring cylinder or graduated cylinder. And to figure out the density, you just divide the volume, sorry, the mass by the volume. Okay, a little bit tricky in the second part. Um, why do the cubes take up kind of more room when they're smashed out up? It's because when they were in cubes, they were, all, they were very tightly mashed together. And when you break them apart, you have just the grains of sugar and there's big gaps in between them. That means they take up more space than they would do if they were packed together. Some chemistry here. So the trick is to remember a soluble thing is something that will dissolve and an insoluble is something that won't. Um, coming on to the diagram one, just try and be as clear as you can. Keep your labels neat. And whenever you're asked to do a method, don't forget to just put numbers on there. It makes it much easier to follow. But to be fair, they've asked you to squash a lot of work into a small area here. So just try your best to be as neat as possible. Uh, quite a few people found this bit tricky. And I think the, the problem here is remembering which type of eclipse is which. So a lunar eclipse is when the moon is hidden and a solar eclipse is when the sun is hidden. So try to remember that way, is in which one's being hidden. So in the first one, a lunar eclipse is when the Earth comes between the sun and the moon. So you can't see the moon anymore because there's no light hitting it. And in the solar eclipse, it's when the moon blocks the sun from the Earth. So we can't see it if you're on that one particular patch of land. Now the second part, B here, is a little trickier. Why do we more often experience um, lunar eclipses than solar eclipses? Well, with the solar eclipse, you won't see it until you happen to be in the exact right position that's being shaded by the moon. It doesn't. it's not all over the Earth, it's just in that one part where you're in the full shadow. Whereas with a lunar eclipse, when they do happen, as long as you're, you're on the night side of the Earth and you're kind of looking out at the night, um, where you're covered by the night, you will see it. Um, because you should be able to see it from all over the night side because it's just reflected light. Um, why do you need to wear goggles? Well, with a lunar eclipse, you're just watching sunlight that's been reflected from the moon. You're not looking directly at the sun. And with a solar eclipse, the reason to wear those kind of weird goggles is we don't have the normal squint. When you're looking at a solar eclipse, you don't squint your eyes as much. If you 
if you were to try looking at the sun, and please don't, you start to squint as your uh, eyes try to protect themselves from having too much light comes in. But with an eclipse, you don't have that same defensive mechanism. That means that the UV light, the ultraviolet radiation, can enter your eyes and damage it. This one's a little trickier to get your head around. If the sun, the earth and the moon all revolved in the same plane, you would see an eclipse more often. But it, they don't quite rotate in the same plane. The moon rotates a little bit off. It's kind of its axis is a little bit tilted, so that sometimes its eclipse will, it'll be above or below the plane. So you won't quite see the eclipse as often. I started to make a mistake here when I did this one, um, which shows to show be really careful when you're doing these kind of graph questions. I started to read it off at twenty five when they were really looking for fifteen. So I was going to try and pretend that it was just showing you how to read off a graph, but I thought I'd be honest. So what they really want to do is get the value at 15. So you go up at 15 degrees and then go across and it should give you a number of two bubbles. So that's the first part. So as they increase the temperature from 45 to 55 degrees Celsius, the amount of bubbles being produced per minute went down, so the rate decreased. Now they don't ask you, but the reason that's happening is the enzymes that control the respiration of the yeast have been damaged and the cell is, the cell, their cells are no longer working as well. They had to wait a little while to let the yeast cells uh, adapt and adjust to the new temperature. Why do they calculate the mean of two? Well, two readings are more reliable than one. And the maximum rate of fermentation was at 45 degrees because that's where the highest point of the graph is. Again with this one, make sure you're exact about which equipment to use. If you were to say a mass balance here, you would not be correct because you're looking with how you measure weight. So a newton meter or a newton balance. Draw a label diagram. Well, a clamp stand or something to hold the spring in place. A spring, uh, some weights that will make it extend, and a meter stick to measure how far it gets extended by. First things first here, just plot the points and then join them up. And um, finally, they're looking for an extension of nine centimeters. So go across from the nine centimeter extension and then down and read off the weight value, which is 22.5. And the second part, what extension would be caused by 8 newtons? Well, this time you go up from 8 newtons and read it off it across. It's a little harder to see here, but it's about 3.2 centimetres. And don't forget your units each time here. Well, with heavier weights, the um, spring will keep getting more and more extended, but eventually you'd reach a point where you've gone past its limit of elasticity, and if you kept adding weights, it would just get stretched out of, out of line, so you wouldn't get the straight line anymore. <laughs>